Hi there! I wanted to do a video on touch inputs, but as some of you guys mentioned in the comments, there's some unclarity about the connections of the nodes. And in this video, I'll try to make it clear for you to understand the connections. I'm gonna use the player flow graph, and most of the graph was created in the previous videos. If you observe the connections, there are mainly two types of connections. And you can see those connection names right here in the graph inspector. So there's control inputs, control outputs, value inputs, and value outputs. So the two types of connections are control connections and value connections. And in the graph, the control connection has this green arrow, and I sometimes refer to as flow connection. Everything else is actually a value connection. They might look different, so for a transform function, you can see that it looks like that. For a string, it's an orange circle. For a game object, it's a cube. There's a float, which is blue. So you can see all these different value connections. We have green circles for generic values, and there's lots more values types. But I guess the unclear part is about how they all work together. One way that you can actually see a clearer picture of what's going on is by turning on the relations. So at the top right here, if we turn that on, you can see some of the internal connections that are going on here. And from that, you can actually tell which connections you have to connect. So for instance, if you take a look at the set variable right here, you can see the outputs only go when you connect the control input. That's the only time this node is gonna run, when you have a control. But if you take a look at the vector three create right here, you can see that although it has the control connection, we can access the value directly too, because it's actually linked to those values. Let me turn it off. And that's why you can see that I'm not actually using here. Now I'll come back to when you would actually use this in a little bit. But for now, let me try to get you to understand how it all works together. So for instance, we have the fix update right here, right? This is an event that is fired fixed amount of times per second. So when the event gets fired, the control input flows here and it triggers the method in the set variable to run. Now, what does the set variable do? The set variable has an input, a generic input, and it needs to get the value for it. So a way you can think what happens next is by tracing it back. It needs a value here. So it requests from the connection, which is a lerp. Now the lerp node has a function that runs based on the values that it's provided. It traces back its connections, so it gets the variable from the input right here. And then the other connection that it has is the B connection, and that one's connected to our horizontal input. So it gets that input. Then it uses the other default value that we put in here, computes the value, and passes it to our set variable. And after the set variable gets the value, it runs the method that sets this value to a variable of the graph. And then it can trigger the next controlled node. So this form of connection is what's called a dynamic value retrieval. That means that the value gets calculated when it's needed. Now on the other side, if we turn on the relations, you can see that the value right here is actually assigned by the control. The nodes that use it don't receive it dynamically. They get an assigned value of this node. So whenever the vector create is retrieving the value from the set variable, it's looking at the assigned variable of this node. So by retrieving the value here, it does not trigger to run this logic again, which in this case, it's a good thing that it does that. Now that's pretty straightforward for a set variable because that's what you expect is when you're trying to set a variable, a store a variable somewhere, you're doing some kind of function that needs to be controlled of when you actually want to save this variable. And that's pretty much how I think about which controls to connect and which are not so important to connect. So you can clearly see here that there's a set variable, set position, set rotation, and this word set helps you out to understand which ones you need to connect. Now there's nodes with an optional control connections. And vector three right here is one of those optionals. And you can tell that by looking at the relations. And in this relations, you can see that the output is actually not assigned. It can be retrieved dynamically because the connections go to the value themselves, not like the set variable. And the scenarios where you would actually want to use this control inputs is when you want to retrieve the value more than once. 
So let's go to the start event and I'll do a quick demonstration. So after our start event, what I want to do is print a log message. So let's try log and then we'll need another one. By the way, a shortcut to duplicate a node, you can use control D, same as you can use for duplicating game objects or scripts. And let's connect them like this. And for our message, let's get random range node. So let's create a connection. And for random range, if we click relations, you can see that we have that optional control connection. Let's begin by not using that control and connect this node to the second message as well. For our range, let's go from 0 to 10. Now we can click play and see what happens. So as soon as our script starts, you can see that we printed out two messages. So the first message has the value of 0.58 and the second one has 5.29. And you can see right away that those values are actually different. And you can see them displayed here too. So 0.58 and 5.3. Now look what happens when we use control connections on the random range. So let's disconnect that and connect it to random range. And from our random range, we'll connect it back to debug log. Let's click play. And as you can see here, the values are exactly the same. 1.16 and 1.16. So when we use the control connections, the value actually got assigned to the output and whoever retrieves that value is going to get that assigned value. It's not going to compute it again. And I think this example right here clears up that optional control inputs. In case if you actually wanted to get different uh, random range for the outputs, you wouldn't use it. But if you want to use the same random range, then you would actually use the control connections. So I hope this video cleared up some things for you guys. And if there's still something not clear about the connections or any other topic, feel free to mention that in the comments and I'll try to address those questions. Like always, thanks for watching. Click the like button if you like the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And I'll see you in the next one.